Hey guys, this is Guile. So today I picked up the new Blood Angels Codex. Been flipping through it a little bit. Uh, I thought I'd go a kind of a real brief review, a few of my opinions. Now these are just my opinions, not fact, so no hating. And uh, just going to go a little bit about the changes, what I see here, um, some of the things people may not like, some of the things people may like. Just a quick overview. So first off, on the book itself, it is beautiful. Um, far back like the other ones. The art in here is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's a very quality. It's a very high quality book. Um, no complaints with that. There, GW's done a beautiful job as they have with all the recent codexes. Uh, it's got all the fluff in the background. There's the markings, what you need to build a fluffy army. Some images that we've seen before, some that are brand new. A little bit about the successor chapters. A little less than I've seen in other literary works, but um, still, it's nice to see some variety in here. Once again, beautiful pictures of their models. The new stuff coming out right there on the screen, plus the old pictures. So, no complaints at all with the quality of book, but... I mean, that's not what you guys are watching this video for. So let's get to the good stuff. Going and talk a little bit about the HQs first. Now, there's been a lot of different changes here. Captains, same as they've always been. Uh, you can have Artificer Armor now, which is nice. A good variety of gear. But I think really super different. Same thing with Librarians. They have, as they always have been, you got this new model that's looking nice of a librarian in Terminator armor. Kind of like that he actually has a combi melta. When I was looking at the sprue, it looks like he also has a bare hand, so you don't actually have to have the gun. So that's nice. Tycho. He is still in here. Biggest difference on him is he no longer gives the entire army the leadership 10, which is the main reason I used him. And he no longer ignores armor saves, so he took a bit of a hit. And this is going to bring me into one of my points on the new book. It's very reminiscent of 3rd edition. Okay, so Tycho's kind of heading back to where he was. He still has the hatred of orcs. Uh, his commie melt is a little bit different now. It's AP4 and... The Melta range is up to 18 inches for some reason, no, not complaining. It's a little different for um, a combi Melta, but why not? Gives it a little personality. Uh, other than that, he's not a whole lot different. I mean, he does have the 4 plus and Vulnerable still, so that's one up from 3rd edition. But he, the whole book just reminds me of 3rd edition in many ways. You also still have your Death Company Tycho, except this time he can actually join Death Company. So it used to annoy me that he lost independent character in the last edition and had to run solo. So he can run with the Death Company, but that's the only squad he can run with as Tycho the Lost. Librarian Dreadnoughts are now HQ, which really does make sense. Um, they can have level mastery too. Force weapon, they can use the same psychic abilities that other, the other um, uh, Blood Angel librarians can use. Uh, sanguinary, biomancy, demonology, divination, and pyromancy. Psychic, power, psychic pilot masterly, sorry, psychic pilot master level one, but can be upgraded. And uh, he also can have warlord traits, but only from this book. He cannot use the standard ones. Mephiston. Now, here's a character that changed a lot. He's no longer the mini demon prince. He's went down to strength 5, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 4 attacks, but he gained independent character. So, even though he's not quite as tough as he used to be, I think just the fact that he can join squads is really going to make him more useful. Because my problem with Mephiston, a group of Chaos Chosen with plasma guns would just gun him down. Um... Snipers, Riptides, you know, he just couldn't hide. You'd have to spend a lot of points giving him additional independent characters to join him just to make it where he can handle the shooting, especially since he didn't have an invulnerable save. 
Now you can just stick them in a group of tactical marines or in some assault marines on foot or maybe in a drop pod with some assault marines. He just has those obative wounds. And he's mastery level 3. He's got the sanguine sword, so that's a psychic ability. It's a single charge, gives him strength 10. Combine that with a force weapon. I mean, it's only AP 3, but that's still enough to slaughter most uh, Tyranid monstrous creatures. Get one wound on a two, force, boom, gone. It's just the only problem is getting those psychic powers off against the Tyranids. But uh, I, I think he's uh, still in there. It's one heck of a good character. Moving on a little bit, Sangrenor, he's similar. I mean, he lost a whole sergeant upgrade, but that was kind of rolled the dice anyways. His invulnerable save dropped from a 3 to a 4. I'm not crazy about that, but he did become cheaper. He's only 200 points now. And uh, everything else is very similar. I think I'll still be using my Sangrenor from time to time. Astrath the Grim, I never really used him before. I have the model, never even painted him. I've just never put him on the table. But uh, he looks about right. His axe is a little nicer. Melee, killing strike, two-handed. Unwilly, though, but strength plus one, AP two, standard axe. But the killing axe, you know, any roll of a six automatically wounds and causes instant death. It's not bad. And uh, he has what the old all chaplains used to have in allowing Death Company to reroll the wound. I mean, that's one reason to take him. I, if you're going on a heavy Death Company themed army, I could see him, but uh, I still don't think I'll be fielding him much. Sanguinary Priest, another big change. Now, if you didn't know the old Blood Angel Codex, you used to be able to take them in as elite choice, up to three of them for a single elite choice. You'd be able to divide them amongst all the squads you want with the independent character rule and just basically give Feel No Pain and Furious Charge to any unit you wanted. And they're relatively cheap point-wise if you got them bare bones. Now they're an HQ choice. It's only one per slot. He still has the Narthesium, which is going to give the Feel No Pain. And his Chalice, rather than Furious Charge, gives plus one to Weapon Skill. Now, that's not a big deal because all Blood Angels have, what, have Furious Charge now. But it's just a huge change. Like, I have six uh, Sanguinary Priests. And now I cannot even imagine a game where I would use more than two. Just because each one is going to take up an HQ slot, and there are just better HQs. So, uh, nah, they kind of got hit with a nerf bat just because of their availability. Corbulo, also, not what he was. He's, once again, closer to 3rd edition. He lost that 2 plus feel no pain. He now just has the normal feel no pain. Uh, he does have the furious charge. His weapon gives, his grail, sorry, gives the uh, plus 1 to weapon skill. He does still have the one reroll, and they more, made it more specified on what he can use it on. And he does have the uh, same chain sword that has the plus one strength and rending, so that's not bad. But he's just not the uh, tank he used to be. You know, put him in front of your unit, anything that's less than AP three, you know, AP four and up, you'd have him take the armor save, then the feel no pain. He'd just absorb wounds like mad. And he'd just look out, sir, at anything that would bypass his armor or feel no pain. But now he's tamed down a bit. I could see him as an elite choice, but taking up an HQ slot for Corbulo, I just don't think is going to happen in a lot of lists. Tech Marine, for some reason, is an HQ. Uh, one wound, can have a handful of thralls, run around, fix your tanks. Once again, a model I don't see getting a lot of action in my army. In fact, I haven't used the Tech Marine since 3rd edition when they were part of the Honor Guard. So, uh, I just don't see it unless somebody's really in love with vehicles and wants those repair rolls. Your Chaplains are part of your HQ, and they only have two wounds, so goodbye, Recluse Yark. I don't know. There's just better HQs now. I've always ran a chaplain with my Blood Angels, even ever since second edition. I've got the old Blood Angel chaplain, the one off the cover of the Angels of Death Codex. You guys have been around a while. You know the model I'm talking about. 
I've just always used him. Um, but in this book, I just don't, you know, there's better choices. So I think I'm just going to have to stop or just use him in just really big games when I multi-force Oregon. Uh, that's, I guess, old war, old terminology when I multi-cat it. Um, that's HQs in a nutshell, so off to troops. First is your tactical squad. Now, a lot of people are kind of pissed off about troops because uh, the assault squads have left the troops. Death Company is no longer troops. You can no longer unlock Sanguinary as troops. So when it comes to troops, you only have two choices, your tactical and your scout. And the only real difference I see in first glance, excuse me, <coughs> is that they get the Heavy Flamer, as is already all over the internet, and uh, their captains get Inferno pistols. Other than that, they look like pretty much just normal tactical squads. They just have Furious Charge. I guess that's kind of like a chapter tactic for these guys. This doesn't affect me heavily because I started in 2nd edition where Blood Angels were just Space Marines and Red Armor. And then I went to 3rd edition where the Codex was the same way. You had your Scouts, you had your Tax Squads, that was your Troops choice. So I have 6 painted up Tax Squads ready to go. But your newer players to the Blood Angels who concentrated on those Assault Squads are probably kind of pissed off tonight. Because they're going to have to buy, you know, at least one tactical squad to split into two five-man squads in order to field some troop choices. I mean, that's not a huge expense, but it does change their play style quite a bit. But, uh, you know, one thing in Warhammer, every few years you just know you're going to have to can your army and rethink your tactics. Because you're, everything's going to change. It happens over and over again. And it's good. It's good to kind of step out of the box, rethink tactics, find new ways to use the game. It keeps it alive. So it's not just the same old thing forever. So you got your tactical squads, just like I said, just like anybody else. Same options as the Space Marine one, except for that you get the Heavy Flamer. Uh, scout squad, and notice a lot of difference. You have to pay for sniper rifles now, but they're only, I think, one point. Yeah, one point. Whoop de doo. Not a big deal. Get your camo cloaks. You can have the Hellfire rounds for the uh, heavy bolter. Not super useful, but can be nice. Uh, so, overall, not a whole lot different. I heard a lot of moaning on the internet about the loss of the Honor Guard with the rumors, and they're right, there is no more Honor Guard, but now we have Command Squads, and the Command Squads have Jetpacks, jet so you know what, Honor Guard just got his name changed, that's it people, the, the world's not ending, you have your Apothecary just like you did before, you have, oh sorry, Sanguinary Noviate, you have your Champion, just like the Space Marine Codex, you can have your Standard, it allows you to reroll, saves, you get all the same upgrades that you always did. Except for these guys can actually have jetpacks. Let me see. Let's see if they can have anything else. I don't see bike options here, so it looks like it's just jetpacks. Alright. So, oh, and they are an elite choice. Also an elite now is your death company. They're cheaper. Which is nice. They have the same rules they used to have. The Fearless, Feel No Pain, Furious, Charge, Rage, Relentless. I'm not going over exact points on purpose because I don't want to get GW making mad at me as it is. I'm giving too much details, but I don't want to overdo it. Uh, not a lot different. Character full unit. I have 15 Death Company. I don't use them a lot in 5th. In 3rd and 4th, I use them a lot. In 6th edition, I've used them a couple times. They're always just too expensive in a, what was already a very expensive army. So now that they cost less points, I'm going to experiment using them a bit more. The only thing I don't like about them is the Martis. Great character. I, I did use him. But uh, as far as I can tell, looking at this book, he now takes an elite choice just to have him. So your death company will take one, plus he'll take one. So that's two elite choices for the death company if you use the Martis. And uh, he is an independent character now, but he can only join death companies. So, I mean, what's the point? He doesn't have that little thing that they had in the Space Wolf Codex where if you take, like, Arjak and Wolfguard, he didn't take a slot. You know, 
those upgrades where you could buy the character by himself or with the unit, and either way, it would take one slot. I can't see that the Blood Angels have that. Maybe they'll fact that, maybe they'll add that, but I'm just not seeing it. So as far as I can tell, if you want Lamartis in your death company, you have to surrender an extra elite choice, and I just don't like that. Uh, you get your Sanguinary Guard. I don't even own any of these guys. They were too expensive for what you got, and only five-man squads back in the last Codex. And now I'm thinking I might actually pick up a squad. They're uh, a little bit cheaper. And you can have 10 per squad. So they might actually be a little bit more viable with the way everything else in the army has gotten just a little bit cheaper here and there. So uh, I'm probably going to pick up a couple boxes and try them out. So I'm not one to tell you how they do. Since I've never used them. So uh, I'll let you know. Dreadnoughts. Same Space Marine Dreadnought. Nothing really special except now you have Furious Charge, but when you're Strength 10, what's the difference, <laughs> really? Same upgrades as you do with other uh, Dreadnoughts. Nothing particularly exciting. Death Company Dreadnoughts. Um, we all know about the, the Fists and the Claw change. Now the Claws are just Fists with Shred, and they cost you 10 points. I don't know. I might buy them, might not. It's a good way to spend an extra 10 points you have lying around, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't really seem like a big deal to me. You can dump your smoke launchers and get magna grapples for free now, but all the magna grapples do is allow you to reroll your charge against vehicles and gives you a move through cover. Not, no, not bad. But that just doesn't have the personality of the old one. You know, you had that extra shot. You had the fun of trying to drag them over here. A whole scorpion from uh, Mortal Kombat thing going on. I can't tell you how much fun it was Fun it was to scream, get over here, as you're pulling an Eldar Raider at you. But uh, that's gone. They're, they're just kind of a, a raged dreadnought. Characterful, fluffy, kind of fun, but not all that. Furiosa Dreadnoughts, still fun. Armor 13 Dreadnought, you can have your frag cannon, your double fists, your double claws. I have an old, actually my Furiosa Dreadnought was an old 2nd edition Blood Angel Dreadnought that I happened to get my hands on the right, power, right arm power claw from somebody trading. So, uh, they're fun. I have only one, I've only ever used one. Um, but it's a fun, careful unit. Not a lot different here. I haven't even bothered to check if he got less points or not. But, uh, he looks pretty much the same. He just has Furious Charge now. And once again, Strength 10. whoop de do. Alright, still in the Elites. Got the Terminators and Terminator Assault Squad. Both standard. Not much different than what we had before. Now your Assault Squad, Terminator Assault Squad, can have a banner. It's kind of different. So you can, you know, put your new Blood Angel Captain and Terminator armor with them and have the standard. So it's not really a command squad because you don't have an apothecary, but kind of makes a fluffy and nice centerpiece model. I'll probably pick up one box of these new guys just because of all the pretty on them, uh, the markings and the special war gear on them. It'll be fun. One moment. All right, still in elite. We have our Vanguard and our Stern Guard. Um, they don't appear a whole heck of a lot different than uh, the ones you have in the Space Marine book, except we can have hand flamers and inferno pistols. Uh, I don't really use hand flamers. I use them a lot in my sister's battle, but not really my blood angels. I got a couple models with them, but yeah, it's a nice little extra d3 hits when somebody charges in but the strength 3 never really does a whole lot but and they're fun inferno pistols useful for deep striking in and trying to get the back of annihilation barges oh i hate necrons just so everybody knows i hate necrons but anyways uh but they're pretty much the same as where you have in other places so not a lot of difference there Rhinos and Razorbacks. Uh, rhinos are fast, just like they were in the last book, which is fun. Razorbacks are also fast. Downside, Assault Squads can no longer have Razorbacks. Makes no sense to me, but that's the only difference I really found here. Other than that, uh, they're slightly more expensive, but they have the overcharged engines, so that's why. 
Drop pods are fast attack choices. Yum yums. Um, other than that, they're pretty much the same as everybody else's drop pods. Same with land speeder squads. One idea I have with drop pods, I'm just going to throw out there, is I'm trying with the idea of allying my blood angels with my sisters of battle and dropping dominion squads behind, you know, putting dominion squads with four melted guns inside blood angel drop pods and just dropping them right next to my enemy's armor, their lords of war, all that kind of good fun. On turn one, I'll get eight melted guns there, pretty close range. I want to try that tactic. Don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm going to try it eventually. Anyways, nickels worth of free, whatever you want to call it. Lance beaters, same as everybody else's, nothing special. Salt squads, now in the fast attack, like they were back in third. Uh, about the same as everybody else's. You get an Inferno pistol. I did notice that Sergeant can take melee and ranged weapons, or stuff in the melee and ranged weapons list. And when I was looking in the ranged weapons list, let me get the exact wording here. A model may replace his bolt pistol and or melee weapon with one of the following. And the only reason I bring this up was I was thinking about equipping some veteran sergeants from the assault squads with two inferno pistols. Because I can do and or pistol or melee weapon. And with the Gunslinger rule, if you have two pistols, you can fire them both. So that would allow a basic assault squad to drop in with four melta guns. Two melta guns and two Inferno pistols on the Sergeant. So, nice little squ assault squad with four melta shots. Something else I've been playing with. Let me know if any of you guys have done it, if it worked for you. Uh, bike squads... Happy to see him because we have grav guns now. But uh, other than that, they're pretty much the same as everybody else. Nothing really special there. Attack bike squads like they've always been. Scout bike squads. Cluster mines just now make one area of terrain uh, dangerous terrain. I have some scout bikes and I really use them. But they're kind of you know, cool little models. Storm Raven. We are now into the heavies. I can't really see a lot of difference with the Storm Raven. It's 200 points, free last cannon upgrade, free melt -a gun upgrade. I, I don't know if it's always been this way and I never noticed, but you have to give up your side doors in order to get the uh, Hurricane Bolters. Uh, I'll need to look to see if it's always been that way and I just never noticed, but I just noticed it when I was reading today. Eh, kind of stinky, but you know, you had that front door. It's not like they can actually knock a door out. And being a flyer, you can generally put yourself where you want, so it's not a big deal, but I don't know. Guys, let me know if that's always been that way, or maybe I'll just break out my book and see for myself. Who knows? Uh, Devastator squads, same as they've always been. No real difference there. Bow Predator is now in the heavies. This is one thing I really don't like, because I used Bow's. One of the lists I would use had a lot of Predators running around, both three in the heavy and a couple in the fast, just when I feel like going tank heavy and having some fun. And uh, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right being in the heavy slot. You know, it's not really heavy weaponry. Heavy flamers, heavy bolters, assault cannons, they're not, they don't have the punch of the last cannons. So they just don't feel right to me in heavy, but hey, what can I do? They still have the overcharged engines for free, so I can't complain too much. The normal Predator, Vindicator, same as everybody else's, except... Um, the Blood Angels, they don't they no longer come with the fast engines. But you can pay to increase them. So even though they're not fast off the start, you can pay a couple extra points and get that rule back if you really want it. A Vindicator, I can't really see a point in it, but Predators, I run a one with an auto cannon and last cannon sponsons. It's always nice being able to move him six and fire all guns. Plus I have uh uh, what do you call it? The Annihilators 2. Those were always fun to be able to move to get a better shot and fire with all those last cans. So I'll probably still pay for the overcharge engine. Real wins. I have a couple. Don't use them very often unless I'm going up against Dark Eldar because they're great for annoying their little bike units and things that have great jink. You know, a nice ignore cover shot landing on top of their head, especially now that Baron's gone, a little cheesy turkey. Um, Land Raiders. Just like everybody else's, nothing really special there that I noticed. They can no longer deep strike. 
that might irritate some people. Personally, it never made much sense to me that you had this ancient relic. Um, even if you had more than everybody else, you wouldn't exactly dump it out of a plane. I think you'd still take care of it. So uh, no longer deep striking land raiders just makes sense to me. I'm, I'm kind of happy to see that rule go, to be honest. Dante is now a lord of war. And Dante is finally worth taking. His axe is not unwieldy. So he now has that beautiful initiative 6 and a strength 6 AP2 Mastercrafted Axe. The Axe Mortalis actually is a relic now rather than just a Mastercrafted piece of poop. Uh, his Infernus Pistol is just an Inferno Pistol. What used to be the relic now is just normal and what used to be normal is now a relic. Go figure. He has Eternal Warrior, finally, which he should have always had if you ask me. And... Uh, He's got the Warlord trait that gives the um, um, the Descent of Angels rule. That rule is no longer there for all the Blood Angels, but it is for him if he is in the, the army. Uh, he's not fearless, which is kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. You know, he can break, but then again, he can break. Comes in handy sometimes being able to flee from people you can't hurt, plus the ability to take cover if you need to. That fearless kind of messes up. But also means he can get overrun, which kind of stinks. He does have hit and run, though, which is good. Oh, he can't be overrun. I have Andy Shalom up here. What am I saying? Ignore that entire rant. I lost my consciousness there for a minute. So Andy Shalom up here protects him from that. So I guess it's all good. He can actually break and get away if he needs to. Plus, he has the hit and run, so that's kind of a moot point, too. So ignore that entire rant. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's late. And uh, Gabriel Seth. Uh, now, both these guys are Lords of War, in case I didn't say that. And I don't understand why Gabriel Seth is Lord of War. I guess just because he's a chapter master. Dante, he, he's a boss. Gabriel Seth, he's okay. I mean, he's not even 200 points. His weapon is strength times 2, AP 4, rending. Okay. If he gets a 6 to hit, he gets an additional hit. So he's got mini Tesla in close combat. Um, I mean, he's alright. Don't get me wrong. He's fearless, furious charge, rage. But uh, he's just not Lord of War material. He's no Drago. He's no Dante. But uh, he is, it is what it is. For formations, we now have a battle company. Which is your Captain, Chaplain, Command Squad, six attacks, two assaults, two devastators, two dreadnoughts, and a death company. What you get for that is objective secured. You get to reroll the uh, Warlord trait if it's not already set for you. And you get Red Thirst, which gives you plus one to your initiative on turns you charge, which goes back to the old school for your Furious Charge, once again, going back to third edition. Uh, I like it. But I did some quick math, and it's uh, around 2,500 points to actually use this, at least with the models I have. And that's with only five-man Devastator squads and only a five-man Death Company. So, uh, I don't know. I don't see this in the table a lot just because the sheer amount of points it'll cost. And the other formation they have here, if I can find it real quick, gets you an extra elite slot. Other than that, it looks like a CAD. Um, but the bonus it gives you is that plus one initiative on the charge. And it has no restriction, so you can take anything you want in it. A minimum of one HQ, two troops, one elite. Other than that, it's just a normal CAD with an extra elite slot. You lose objective secure, but you get the red thirst. Overall, I like the book. Good quality book. It's not going to affect me as much as others because my army is actually built around the old 3rd edition because I've been playing this that long. But, uh, I don't know, a few things I don't like. It's just going to be a matter of relearning the army. I hope this is helpful to someone. I say to those people who are pissed off, don't give up on the Blood Angels. I think this book will serve us just as well as the ones in the past have. It's just a matter of relearning your army. Um... Kind of just tweaking your tactics and uh, take it as a challenge. You know, you get to try something new. 
not keep playing the same old list you always have. Now you got to rethink everything and just take it as a challenge, guys. Um, the Sons of Sanguinis are still in there. I think they're going to serve us well. If you like the video, please subscribe. If you have any comments, please throw them down there. I look at every single one I receive. And uh, thank you guys for your time.